In this introductory chapter, we'll start by defining location theory and begin to frame out exactly what this body of knowledge encompasses. We'll talk about the complex interplay between business location choices, urban spatial structure, and innovation and technological change, which really lies at the heart of location theory. And we'll also introduce traditional location factors for businesses, as well as how we think about different types of economic activity and their location needs before finally setting up the outline for the rest of the course at the end of the chapter. All right, so let's start with a clear definition for location theory. Location theory seeks to explain the basic universal factors that determine and influence the location of all kinds of economic activity. This involves several different concerns. So in location theory, we're gonna be talking about obviously business location choices, which is probably the first thing that comes to mind when you think about the question of universal factors determining the location of economic activity, right? How do individual businesses choose their locations? But we're also going to be concerned with urban spatial structure and urban form, how these individual business location choices aggregate up to form urban spatial structure, and also how urban spatial structure and the kind of given geography of urban areas influence business location choices. And we're also going to be interested in how location factors influence technological growth and economic development, and also how technological change and changes in transportation systems and infrastructure influence the business location calculus. So these are the three primary features that we're going to be diving into that make up this fundamental idea of location theory. So to hone in on a few of these relationships just a little bit more, it's important to understand that the aggregate location decisions of businesses and also households generate the pattern of urban spatial structure and the urban hierarchy itself. So we have this quote from Chris Stoller from his uh, Central Places in Southern Germany, from which this diagram also comes from. But just as there are economic laws which determine the life of the economy, so are there special economic geographic laws determining the arrangement of towns. And this is really the fundamental thesis of location theory, is that there are particular economic geographic laws that we can understand to derive a particular theory of not only the placement of individual businesses or households or types of economic activity if we want to classify them as land uses rather than businesses, but also that we can understand the larger systems of interaction and agglomeration and even the urban hierarchy itself by understanding these kind of universal laws. So part of this is certainly in some of these theories, we're going to be dealing with kind of the individual choice calculus of an individual type of business, but we're always going to be interested in scaling that up to see what the aggregate sum of those decisions mean for urban spatial structure and urban arrangement and really economic geography of the world as a whole. At the same time, though, the reverse of that idea is that the existing pattern of urban land use transportation systems and spatial structure influences the location choices of individual businesses, right? So obviously, in a large sense, all of the aggregate sum of the decisions, the location decisions of different businesses creates urban form and guides, you know, kind of the necessary demand for transportation systems and probably guides the planning process in a broad sense in many cases. But once we have an urban spatial structure, if you're an individual business making a decision, it's going to be directly related to that existing kind of infrastructure, right? So as you'll see, each of these components has kind of a reciprocal relationship with one another. And it's the same for business location decisions and technology. Business location decisions shape and are shaped by technological change in kind of the same way that they shape and are shaped by urban spatial structure. And one of the primary components of agglomeration theory that we'll discuss in the next chapter deals with the way in which business location patterns matters for entrepreneurship, knowledge exchange, innovation, and learning. These are all fundamental components that drive technological change and innovation on kind of a macro scale. And their fundamental underpinnings are related to the 
almost micro scale location decisions that individual businesses and economic actors make. So in that sense, business location decisions influence large scale technological development. But on kind of the reverse angle again, macro level technological change, once it's taken effect, influences what inputs industries need and how prevalent they are in the economy overall, right? So if we're in an economy in the industrial revolution that's dominated by manufacturing, um, you know, obviously that is due to technological change from kind of the more agricultural feudal economy and thus the location needs of individual businesses in the industrial economy are going to be much different than the agricultural economy. It's going to be much less to do with the land and soil quality, more to do with location to inputs, the weight of the different input materials, etc. This also applies within one industry. So the technology, as technology changes, it also is going to influence what the same industry needs over time, right? So what a manufacturing, automobile manufacturing plant needs in terms of its inputs and the relative importance of those and in terms of size and location is going to be much different in 1900 than it is in 2020. There are probably, you know, much fewer workers in 2020 needed to produce the same amount of output. A lot of the mechanical inputs are probably more specialized come from different locations, the supply chain is different, et cetera. So even within one industry, technological change will influence the relative importance of different location factors. Also, another kind of technological change in terms of transportation technology influences these location calculuses. So transportation technology changes urban spatial structure by changing the location choice calculus for individual businesses. And of course, this is something that is, is kind of very evident in the study of any kind of urban planning history or environment, but we will readily see in location theory the importance of transportation uh, because when we're trying to derive a purely location-based economic theory of business activity, the location component is going to be fundamentally tied to transportation and of course tied to the transportation technology or specific features of transportation available or necessary for a given industry so this is another avenue kind of through which technological change actually ends up influencing urban spatial structure and to kind of diagram this in a very straightforward way i've i've put these things kind of in their direct relationships to one another here so we can see our primary focus is, is usually going to be the business location choices themselves here in the middle. But they influence and are influenced by urban spatial structure because the aggregate of all individual business location choices becomes urban spatial structure. And of course, in some sense, once urban spatial structure is created, it then has an influence on the individual location choices of different businesses. And as we talked about, and we'll talk about more in the next chapter, individual business location choices in terms of their proximity to one another influences innovation and technological change on a macro scale because these are some of the most important features for learning in the economy, how individual businesses learn from one another in close proximity. But of course, on the other side, macro scale technological change and innovation drives the importance of particular location factors for individual businesses. And also through that connection, transportation technology change can influence a change in urban spatial structure because it changes the location calculus for individual businesses. If you go from a streetcar city to an automobile oriented city, suddenly the business location calculus needing to be, you know, within 15 minutes of uh, you know, so many residential households in order to have a strong labor market, the radius then, you know, increases by so much by moving from a streetcar transportation technology to an auto transportation technology. And thus, the possible locations for where that business needs to locate still being within 15 minutes of a certain number of households uh, expands and thus that creates an expansion of the urban spatial structure. So we'll be talking about all of these interrelationships at different points throughout this course. Uh, again, classical location theory is primarily focused on probably the relationship between how individual business location choices 
aggregate up to create urban spatial structure and the reverse how urban spatial structure formulates the conditions in which individual businesses make their location choices. But all of these things are at play. And I wanted you to get this sense here at the beginning of the course of this very reciprocal and interrelated nature of these different ideas. So focusing on the central question of individual business location choices, uh, we can think about what the specific location factors for individual businesses are, right? And so this is a pretty standard list that is often used in management science or in economics. These are kind of the primary categories of location factors that we can think of for an individual business. So the land attributes, how the organizational structure matters in terms of location, proximity to capital, uh, proximity to input materials, which can be very important, obviously, for a manufacturing business. The organization of the firm itself can dictate certain location choices. So sometimes the command and control functions would be located in a headquarters that would want to be near, you know, in a large city located close to other kind of financial and management related functions, whereas branch plants or subsidiary offices can be located in other types of areas. So sometimes the organization of the firm itself can prioritize various location factors and locations. Obviously, the cost of land, uh, the potential sales volume, if you're a retail-oriented business, are very important. Transportation costs, proximity to infrastructure is usually very important, whether for customers getting to your business or for shipping your final product if you're a manufacturing business. Agglomeration economies, as I talked about, we'll dive into this more in Chapter 2, but this is the idea that uh, learning and knowledge exchange between businesses uh, can be very important. So locating in clusters of economic activity that have a particular specialization can be extremely valuable for particular industries. And we see examples of those throughout history, but the Detroit automotive cluster is a good example. Uh, Silicon Valley in California in terms of a high technology cluster is also a very good example in, in the more modern information economy. And of course, we have the role of public policy planning in the state, which uh, obviously is is kind of our primary focus in planning. And again, the purpose of this course is to try and understand the economic factors in order to design better planning and policy uh, regulations to guide the urban spatial structure and the decision-making calculus of businesses. And of course, this can come into play both in terms of encouraging economic development in a given community and also in terms of regulating the land use and and ensuring that there's ease of transportation, et cetera. But the different tax profiles and the different regulatory schemes of different locations certainly play a prominent role in business location decision making, as you will, of course, be aware if you work in any kind of economic development field. The point that I want to make is we will make different assumptions about the relative importance of these factors as we move throughout this course, but these are going to be more or less important depending on the characteristics of the business itself. And they're also going to be more or less relevant depending on the urban spatial structure and the particular technological regime that we're in as well. That's something I want you to have in the back of your mind as we start to go through the specific location factors is... Some of these theories were developed in particular eras, like the industrial era, where there was a particular focus on a kind of business, which might also influence the relative importance of these things. But in general, just a kind of overarching point is that business type influences the relative importance of these factors. We can see a very clear, obvious example here. We have the Ford Motor Assembly Plant in Liberty, Missouri on the left, and a Zara clothing retailer on the Magnificent Mile in Chicago on the right. And just by looking at these images, you can immediately get a sense of how the list of location factors that we just looked at on the previous slide can vary significantly between these two types of businesses. So obviously for this large modern manufacturing plant, we're going to value probably low land costs because we need a lot of space. Uh, connection to transportation infrastructure, particularly rail lines, so that we can get inputs in and final products out. Uh, proximity to you know, certain types of labor is important, et cetera. 
Whereas for the Zara clothing retailer, we have a whole different set of relative concerns of those location factors. We want to be in a high visibility, high population density area because we're now a customer facing business and we want a lot of pass by traffic and a lot of people uh, with a lot of money in the immediate areas to be able to, to purchase the clothing. Obviously, we don't have the same exact demands for space kind of horizontally, so we can maybe produce a higher density type of building form, which means we can then locate in a more central location, et cetera, et cetera. Just in a very general sense, I think it's good for you to start thinking about how different types of businesses influence the relative importance of various possible location factors. So what are these types of businesses? How do we classify them? Economists have done this in a number of ways. One kind of very straightforward way is to think about the products of different types of economic activities. And so uh, in this way, we commonly create this differentiation between primary activities, which are extractive, and their products are essentially natural resources, right? So agriculture, mining, Secondary activities take those resources and produce something, a final product. So this is manufacturing or construction. Tertiary activities take those products and sell them uh, as consumer goods. So these are retail businesses, services, food services. These, even in our modern economy, constitute a, a large amount of the economic activity. Quaternary activities product is information or knowledge. So these are businesses that uh, commonly are in the information technology, media, research, education fields, and uh, essentially use human capital to analyze and produce information, which is becoming increasingly important in the contemporary economy. And then sometimes we break out a subset of these quaternary activities and call them quinary activities, uh, which focuses particularly on the management and command and control functions. So oftentimes these are producer services, or we can also think of these as maybe multinational corporation headquarters locations. And the idea of the importance of these is separate from quaternary activities, generally their product is also knowledge, but because their focus is on managing the rest of the economy, they may play a particularly important role in the economy as these kind of centers of command and control uh, production. Sometimes we, we also break those out as, as a unique function. So it's important to kind of understand the basic classification of different types of economic activity, and we will certainly be using this as a frame in which to discuss our specific location theories as we move through the course. It's also important to understand the historical relevance of these industries to the economy as a whole and how that has changed over time. This is kind of a rough approximation, but you know, as we moved into the medieval and feudal times and kind of moving through the 1700s, obviously the vast majority of the population is engaged in primary sector activities, subsistence agriculture, selling surplus agriculture at the market. There's a small um, manufacturing, you know, craft manufacturing in small towns and some maybe specialized uh, sellers of different goods or merchants, right? Maybe a very, very small quaternary activity centered around a royal court or some very small limited universities. But as we move into the Industrial Revolution, obviously the primacy of the secondary and tertiary activities begins to overtake primary activities. And this is partly due to technological change. We developed methods for growing uh, a lot more food on using a lot less labor, which enabled people to then uh, move into jobs in factories, right? And so obviously we reach a, a period of time in the early 1900s where secondary employment kind of peaks. And then since that time, as additional technological development has increased the efficiency of factories, the same kind of thing happens where people move out of secondary employment and into other industries. And we see this growth in tertiary activities and the importance of services and retailing to the economy. 
And then now as we move into the information age and really understand the importance of technology and how central technology is to kind of all economic activity, quaternary activities have really grown in prominence, even in terms of their total employment of the population. And secondary activities have continued to decline, as have uh, primary activities. Now, of course, we're still producing a lot of stuff in primary and secondary industries. It's just we don't need as many people to do it. And of course, this has caused large scale shifts in employment in the economy and resultant political and economic implications. Uh, a lot of that is beyond the scope of this course, but uh, this kind of staging of eras of economic development dominated by particular industries is certainly relevant to this course. And as you'll see, as we move through the subsequent chapters, uh, we will kind of be focusing on particular types of industries uh, often with particular strands of location theory. So in the next chapter, we'll be talking about agglomeration theory, which really concerns all types of businesses, but we do have a particular focus and interest in contemporary knowledge, creative information-based uh, businesses that you'll see. So uh, because agglomeration is all about information exchange, well, not it's not pri only about information exchange, but it is primarily about information exchange. This becomes a really relevant theory to deal with industries and businesses that are primarily focused on information and learning and innovation. Then we'll move into bid rent theory in chapter four, which uh, in many ways is the original location theory developed in the 1800s by Johann Heinrich von Thunen and later applied to urban land uses. And so in some sense, this is the uh, primary sector location theory, but it also deals more generally with patterns of land use, which are applicable again to kind of all types of businesses. In chapter five, we'll talk about industrial location, which is directly centered on kind of manufacturing businesses. And so secondary uh, economic activities. And then we'll move from there uh, to retail location in urban market areas, which are primarily concerned with the sales of goods. So we're thinking now in kind of a tertiary economic activity framework. And from there, central place theory basically develops a hierarchical spatial economic system of overlapping market areas for all kinds of businesses. So in many ways, central place theory is a culmination of these other strands of location theory uh, that certainly do build on one another. And as we just discussed, um, different theories are developed as different types of industries become more prominent in the economy. That's all for the introductory chapter. Now let's move on to chapter three, which is agglomeration, uh, in which we'll discuss how businesses learn from one another and also why cities uh, form and grow to begin with.